to run. I recently received a copy of the new Israeli reform movement prayer book, an electronic copy. The paper book hasn't been printed yet, but that printing is being sponsored in part by Holy Blossom Temple. I received the prayer book so I could begin my own study of this innovative and challenging text. The prayer book was edited by one of our most recent, recent teachers to, to, to our Mark Goodman's Sisterhood Talmud group, Rabbi Alona Lasitza, together with our teacher at our next Shabbat morning Torah study, which is in two weeks, not next week, but the week after, on Shabbat Shuva, Rabbi Dalia Marx. Now, whenever I see a prayer book, I do as my father taught me, and I set my mind, my mind to the Jewish Midah of Zerizut. I show my eagerness to pray a service by flipping to the end and counting how many pages it takes to arrive at this destination spot. When I arrived at the end of this new Israeli Sidor, I was interested to see that the Sidor did not really end. The page count is there. The last text is on page 429, for those that are curious. But it ends with a statement of uncertainty and hope about walking into the future. We're going to spend a bit of time today on the last page of the Sidor, because I believe many of us are looking to flip a page right now to see an end. And an end is coming. I've seen the memes. 5780, it's time to usher you out. 5780, the year from, in the Jewish framing, Satan, the adversary, to test us. 5780, a plague, an asteroid, wildfires, losses, frustrations, and more and more. And we are ready in more ways than one to pick up the last page of the year and in a week from today to move it aside. Right above that statement, which we'll turn to in a moment, of uncertainty and hope is a prayer of uncertainty and hope. It is an original prayer poem by Rabbi Dalia Marx, who we will learn from in those two weeks, and you'll learn how amazing a teacher she is. But today we're gonna to spend a few moments on these words which she wrote. This prayer is all at once a prayer of parting, a prayer for the state of Israel, and a prayer of moral resistance. The Hebrew is beautiful, as is all of Dahlia's writing. And today we're going to spend time on the first and third stanzas. I'm going to share the poem with you so that you can see it in the Hebrew, though I'm going to uh, read the translation. This translation is by one of my liturgy professors many years ago, Rabbi, Rabbi Moshe Zilberschein. whose care is for all moral beings, grant us the courage to continue to remedy the wrongs of the past, even when the price is painful, in order that our land be a blessing to all its inhabitants, its neighbors, and to all who journey in this world. Avinu Malkenu, ten banu koach bisha'at, our Father, our King, grant us strength during this time of rending to sew together the torn, during this time of separation, not to cut down the very roots of our being. When anger rages, help us to embrace and be all-embracing. When our energies are spent, 
Help us to be inclusive, to include and be included. In your light, let us see light, even when the skies are darkest. Answer us on the day we cry out to you. Petach lanu sha'ar, be'et ni'ilat sha'ar. Open for us a gate at the closing of a gate. A pure heart and mind create for us, O God, and a spirit of rightness renew in our midst. Firstly, let me begin by saying that this is a powerful political statement. This is a prayer. This prayer was originally written in the context of Israel's divestment from Gaza. It is presented in this prayer book not as a work of history, but a dream of a prayer to be said for future separations. And it is a universal prayer of parting, of putting down the prayer book, but never really finishing, of putting an object at rest, but taking its words with you. The title of the poem is also the title of a pute from this season, Petach Lanu Sha'ar, Be'et Ni'ilat Sha'ar, translated by Rabbi Zilvershine as Open for Us a Gate, at the closing of a gate. Tonight, tonight is Slichot, the first worship experience of the High Holy Day season. Tonight, we'll begin our goodbye to 5780. We'll be ready to turn the page. But a page to what? I read recently a teaching presented by Rabbi Eric Gervis, which spoke to me and helped me answer this question. This is by Rav Eliyahu Dresler, uh, Dessler, a teacher in the Musar movement which brings forth an idea and listen for it in the text of Nikudat Habechira, the choice, the choice point. Commenting on our parasha, Rav Dessler writes, life and death comprise all that a person is given, all the facets of a person's character, their inborn traits and tendencies, their upbringing and environment, all those factors which determine what a person calls life, meaning what presents itself to that person as good and true, and equally what a person calls death, evil, and falsehood. All these things I've put before you, literally I have given before you, these are the givens of the human situation. They exist independently of any action on our part like all the other features of our environment. But, says the text, you shall choose life. Choosing life, choosing truth and reality is something which only the human being can do for itself, which we do without being affected by outside factors. What is it that Rabbi Dessler is teaching that the facts are on the page, but it's up to us to pick our attitude and choose life. As we grab the page, right now in this moment, we are at the moment of choice of how we are to see this experience and feel it. A page filled with possibility and potential. The material facts of the world might be the same on the page before and the page after. But at the edge of the page where we are now, this season teaches us there lies power. And the power is the choice about how we will approach that new page once we turn it how we choose to live through the narrative. There's a lot of pressure and stress right now, actual pressure and stress. A recent news report focused on cracked teeth, 
which are apparently one of the major things being seen in dental practices at this moment, being forced together and ground up at night because the built up pressure of anxiety comes out that way in the evening when our defenses are down. And for many of my contemporaries, a lot of that pressure is around school starting. Bubbles are shifting as families fear for grandparents. There was a recent conflict in my neighborhood as people misunderstood each other between those sending to school and those keeping their kids home. Both in the end admitted that they made their choices because they felt at the brink and exhausted, afraid of a new wave and turning the page in order to find that the narrative steps back into an earlier difficult part of the storyline. What do I want to find on that next page? Honestly, a quick and effective vaccine, but knowing that the page turns whether we want it or not to 5781 next Friday night, I can't count on miracles. So instead, I pray that I will live to learn with the less than perfect and find less stress in the rolling waves of life that I can find in the brokenness of the self, a way of hugging and embracing, that I can find in this time of separation, a new way of including. In the book of Exodus, Moses addresses a higher power, this time Pharaoh, about setting off to worship God in the desert, in the wilderness. At once comes a question, what should the people bring with them when they leave to worship God? How do we worship God? How do we prepare ourselves to worship God? Moses answers with the words that come just below the prayer that we read in the Israeli Sidor. Va'anachnu lo. Ne, sorry, I can see where I've shared. Va'anachnu lo neda ma na'avod et adonai ad bo'enu shama. We don't know with what or really how we will serve God until we get there. We don't know how we, should, we can worship God until the moment arrives. As we approach these high holy days, we do so with great humility and nervous energy, just like our ancestors stepping into the unknown. We know what we have brought with us in the past, what our families have brought with them in the past, who makes what dish, where we park, how we spend every moment of our days, the opportunities to see friends, how we as the matriarchs and patriarchs of our own families bring others along to share in these transformative experiences and through these and more, how we worship God. This year, we also prepare. I can help as much as I can, guessing at what I would want from these experiences based on our congregational surveys and experiences that I've had in the past. But, None of us have gone on this journey before. Come pick up a machzor. The words will be on the screen for the main services. And for the family services, they will either be on a second device or in the machzor that you're holding in your hands. Having something physical, whether a machzor or a sign on the wall that you've created to show East, a Mizrach, which you can print out from amongst the family activity pack. No matter if you are with young ones or not, you'll see some beautiful Mizrachs in there. You can make your space physical and special. And if you 
do have a child 12 or under, please do stop by the synagogue and pick up one of those activity packs at the times posted, including this Sunday morning, when mock swords will also be available for pickup. The times are on our website. Make sure that you have your tickets and the password. Practice logging on. I'm gonna say it again. As soon as this service is done, as soon as the Kiddush and Conversation are done, practice going to the High Holy Day pages of our website. Help others who need some coaching. Check in with your relatives to make sure that they are able to visit that password-protected members-only page. P please do it more than 10 minutes before that first service starts. And don't forget to buy the ingredients for your honey cake, your brisket, your round challah, your beets and carrots and fish heads, depending on your family's Rosh Hashanah traditions and prepare for those meals to make those meals special. Maybe you wanna join through our dining rooms that we're having on Zoom to connect with people outside your family, or maybe you just wanted to be your family gathered on Zoom for that special meal. And make those plans to connect with family and friends. Some are praying socially distanced in shared yard, backyard spaces or in public spaces, but private sections of those where they can get together and see the prayers taking place, but being together socially distanced. Others are having Zoom parties, keeping both Zoom open and services open so they can pray and hear the voices and harmonies of their friends. Others are planning nature walks and getting ready to hear the shofar, which will be blown in person during Tashlich on the second day of Rosh Hashanah. As we do this, we do it with a new attitude, a new heart, and a mind that is set to see the world around us as fresh once again. Even as we say, Anachnu lo neda ma navod et adonai ad boenu shama, we truly do not know what it will be like when we worship and approach God at this moment, what we will need with us. We approach that moment with this attitude and prayer. Our Father, our King, grant us strength during this time when our world feels broken to sew together the torn, during this time of separation, not to cut down the very roots of our being when anger rages. Help us to embrace and be all embracing. When our energies are spent, help us to be inclusive to include and be included. In your light, let us see light, even when the skies are darkest. Answer us on the day we cry out to you. Open for us a gate at the closing of a gate. A pure heart and mind create for us, O oh God, and a spirit of rightness renew in our midst.